Chernobyl, Fukushima, mutations, Godzilla and Homer Simpson. It's no wonder why nuclear power is one of the most hated forms of energy production. Public opinion polls show that the topic is a divisive one, with a recent US survey highlighting that 47% of participants were opposed to nuclear power. But sentiment wasn't always this negative. In fact, when Eisenhower made his Atoms for Peace speech in 1953, people were excited at the prospect of what a world run on nuclear power could look like. But sentiment has changed over time, often in response to big headline events. But in a world with a declining reliance on hydrocarbons and a need for energy security, there is a strong case to be made for the use of nuclear power. In this video, we investigate the arguments against nuclear power and look at what the statistics say, which are often quite surprising. And if you want to see more content on energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be alerted to future uploads. A compelling argument can be made for nuclear power. Uranium is the most energy dense fuel on the planet, containing millions times more energy per kilogram than natural gas, oil and coal. This means that lots of energy can be produced from a small amount of uranium. Nuclear power stations can last for up to 80 years, which is part of the reason why nuclear power requires the least amount of mineral throughput to create energy out of any renewable sources. And the nuclear fission process releases no carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Nuclear power can provide baseload electricity, which is round the clock electricity even when there's no sun shining or wind blowing meaning that it can be used in conjunction with other energy sources like solar and wind to power a grid 24 hours a day. What's more is that nuclear power plants take up little space, 31 times less acres than solar and 173 times less than wind to produce the same amount of energy. In countries with less land available, this is a huge advantage. France produces 70% of its electricity via nuclear power stations, and as a result, is one of the most energy secure countries in Europe, despite having few domestic hydrocarbon sources. Yet this is a rare case study, with few countries opting to go the nuclear route to such a large degree. Why is this? Well, a handful of nuclear disasters have shifted sentiment to see nuclear as a highly dangerous energy source. But in reality, this isn't the case. In fact, nuclear has one of the lowest mortality rates out of any energy source. Nuclear power is associated with 0.03 deaths per terawatt hour of energy, compared to 20 to 30 with coal, 18 deaths with oil, and even lower than hydropower with an estimated 1.3 deaths per terawatt hour. What's more is that these deaths associated with nuclear power primarily arise from one incident, Chernobyl, which is well documented to have been a result of multiple instances of human error in conjunction with a poor reactor design a combination that is unlikely to ever repeat again. Other nuclear incidents, such as Fukushima and Three Mile Island, resulted in no direct deaths, although the decontamination and overall cleanup processes were extremely expensive. But it's these big headline events that tend to skew people's perception of nuclear power. Similar to commercial plane travel, whilst flying is statistically safer than driving, the rare plane crashes that do occur are more sizeable and publicised than car accidents, and therefore leave the impression that driving is safer than flying, even though the statistics say the opposite. The same can be said with nuclear power. Currently, there are 440 nuclear reactors worldwide, many of which have been in operation since the 1970s and 80s, and have had no incidents whatsoever. Just resting my eyes. Ah, well done. A rested employee is a vigilant employee. Media and pop culture portrayments of nuclear power being dangerous have contributed to this impression. While certain groups, such as Big Oil, have a notable history of lobbying against the nuclear industry for their own benefit. The perception is that nuclear power stations release significant quantities of radiation. But according to the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission, if you lived within 50 miles of a nuclear power plant, it would expose you to 0.01 millirem of radiation. This is negligible when you consider that the average human is exposed to around 300 millirem on a yearly basis due to background sources of radiation. What's surprising is that the average coal-fired power plant emits much more radiation than nuclear power plants. 
According to a paper released by the International Atomic Energy Agency, the radioactive particles in fly ash emitted by burning coal releases a hundred times more radiation than nuclear power stations. People consider coal to be a dirty energy source, but rarely do they associate it with the radiation it gives off. There is one issue that hasn't been completely solved which does cause some concern, and that is the issue of nuclear waste. When looking at the problem of nuclear waste, we see that the spent fuel, also referred to as the high-level waste, poses the greatest challenge as it accounts for 95% of the radioactivity from nuclear waste. Using nuclear fission to produce enough electricity to satisfy someone's yearly demand would only produce 5 grams of this high-level waste. So whilst in total there isn't much volume of waste to deal with, the significant challenge comes from permanently preventing the fuel from emitting radiation to its surroundings. Of this spent fuel, an estimated 96% can be recycled for more power generation or to be used in research which partially solves the problem. But not all countries have opted to recycle this waste due to high costs and fears that the material could get into the wrong hands. So for waste that isn't or can't be recycled, the strategy is to store them in designated facilities temporarily or bury them deep underground. Whilst this doesn't completely solve the waste issue, it is one of the most practical methods of minimising the risks of the waste. Here the challenge lies with ensuring that the spent fuel is encased in materials that are resistant to corrosion for thousands of years. Finland is designing one of the most ambitious nuclear fuel repositories at its Onkolo facility on the west coast of Finland. This deep geological repository is located in an area void of natural disasters and plans to bury spent fuel in corrosion-proof steel and copper capsules deep in the natural bedrock, which would then be buried with clay. The site is expected to be operational within the next year or two and is one of the best examples of what a safe nuclear waste disposal site could look like. But significant investment has to be put into developments like Onkala with the total cost of the project amounting to an estimated 818 million euros. And speaking of cost, another reason why governments are hesitant to invest in nuclear plants is due to the high initial capital costs associated with their construction. Over the past 10 years, the low cost of natural gas has meant that this source has been the cheaper option to provide the nation's baseload electricity generation compared to nuclear. This is part of the reason why in the last 20 years, only one new nuclear plant has entered commercial operation in the US. The poor US government subsidies for the nuclear industry, in comparison to some renewable energy sources, has exacerbated this issue. But it's important to remember that once the power stations are built, their operating costs are relatively low, with the potential to produce cheaper electricity for the lifetime of the plant. The development of small modular reactors, or SMRs, are a new class of smaller nuclear reactors that have many cost advantages to conventional nuclear reactors. These can play a part in reducing the high initial capital costs associated with nuclear power stations. But with only a few SMRs operational in the world, their full potential has not yet been completely realised. The security threats associated with nuclear reactors and their vulnerability to attacks has always been a risk factor with nuclear power. The International Atomic Energy Agency, an intergovernmental organisation, has created nuclear safety and security frameworks attempting to make nuclear reactors as safe as possible and safeguard themselves against potential attacks. Many plants are defended by barriers, buffer zones and containment vessels to defend against attacks, including those from a large aircraft. But not all power plant security systems are universal, nor are they completely secure in the event of an attack. Recent conflict near the Zaforizhia power plant in Ukraine has highlighted the real threat of conflict and highlights the more stringent international rules that must be put in place to prevent an attack on power plants. Thorium-based nuclear power generation is seen to be a much safer form of nuclear power, limiting the potential for meltdowns and producing less nuclear waste. But currently, we are many years away from developing large-scale thorium-based nuclear reactors, so for the time being, these are not likely to be used to a large degree. Overall, it's clear that no power source is risk-free, and nuclear power is a good example of this. 
but the statistics do suggest that nuclear power is one of the safest and most sustainable sources of energy available. Whilst there's often a misguided perception on the risks of nuclear power, we must ensure that reactors are managed to the strictest of standards. In a world with an ever-increasing demand for low-carbon energy, humanity will likely have little choice but to embrace nuclear energy to support our development into the future. Thank you for watching Olive Stripe Productions. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on a wide range of exciting topics covering energy, history and our world, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified of future videos.